Welcome to this video where we will actually get our hands dirty. Now in previous videos I explained something about the Angular 2 architecture and how to set up your development environment. Especially the latter one is very important for you to be able to follow along. So you should definitely check that out. You will find the link in the description and in this video right now where you can click. So I just want to guide you through my folder structure I got here, which is the standard folder structure. This is all the standard from the GitHub repository we downloaded in the previous video. And I got four important folders here. I got my app folder where the compiled JavaScript will go. You don't have to do anything there. Um, gulp will take care of all that if you have it running via gulp command in the terminal. I got my assets folder here where my raw uncompiled SCSS code lives. I got my dev folder here uh, which holds my TypeScript files where we will actually do our editing. And I got my source folder here where the CSS will be compiled to. So app and source will be the compiled stuff and assets and dev will be our development environment. Now I'm inside my app component here and this is a standard Angular 2 component I got here. They all start by importing component from the Angular 2 core package and this is necessary to be able to use the component functionality and to actually have Angular 2 be able to recognize it as a component. Then I get my default TypeScript class here, which will be, as I said, compiled to standard JavaScript. And I'm exporting it to say, hey, this class or this component will be available in other files or modules um, as well. Now, what really makes this a component is this decorator here. I'm adding this component decorator, which is a default Angular 2 decorator, to attach some configuration to this class. And Angular 2 does this a lot. It uses these TypeScript decorators, which always start with an add and then have the decorator name after it, to yeah, really add configuration to a class and make it something else than just a plain JavaScript class. So in this case, I'm adding a configuration of a selector, which basically will be an HTML tag, injecting or using this component, and a template, which is what will be displayed in the browser. This is the hello world text you are seeing over here. Now that, now to actually run this component, I have to load it in two places. One is the boot.ts file, which imports the very important bootstrap method from the, from the Angular 2 package. And all this method does is tell Angular 2, whenever you start this application, so whenever this site gets loaded, you should create this app component, which will be the root component. Only the root component has to be created through this bootstrap class here, but this is very important to do. Now, the second place where you will have to add something to actually be able to see this component here is the index.html file, where I got this, um, these app tags here. Now, as you might be aware, app is not a default HTML tag. It is indeed the tag I, um, I identified, I create, created by adding this app selector here. So obviously you should choose names here, which uh, won't get into the way of default HTML tags. Now between these tags, we see this loading text here, which really will only be displayed if there A is an error or B, the app is actually loading. So if we reload this page, we'll see it blinking up for a second. Okay, so now let's get into this app component here. Oh, and by the way, all this stuff here is just Angular 2 stuff necessary to be able to run this application or any application, any Angular 2 application. So inside this app component, just displaying some text is pretty boring. Uh, let's change something here. Now throughout this course, we'll be building our quite complex contact app. And we will start by just displaying one single contact. Specifically, I want to display the name here. And when we click on it, we will see some more information about this contact. And this will already use quite some different functionalities of, uh, functionalities of Angular 2. And especially we will see some data binding in action here. So let's start by replacing this text here um, with two back ticks. 
And what those backticks do is they allow us to write anything which will be interpreted as, as a string on multiple lines so we can structure it as we would in a normal HTML document. And be aware we could also use an external HTML document as a template and I will show it to you in later videos as we will be able with CSS files but for now I will use these in file templates here. So um, really let's just um, add a heading here h3 maybe and add a name. But obviously just adding some text here again won't do anything. We first need to store some contact information in a variable I will create here in a property of this class. So this will be a public property and I will just call it contact. And this property will be a JavaScript class and it will have a first name of Max, which is my name, but you can pick any name you want, obviously. Last name will be also my surname, but if you don't like the mm. character, you can also pick any name you want. We'll have a phone number. This won't be mine, so don't even try it. And let's say an email address. You could try this one. Okay, so this is just this class or uh, just this uh, object, this contact object here. Now I can display information from this contact by just um, outputting it in the Angular 2 template here by using Angular 2 template syntax and this are double curly braces here. Contact first name. Now if we save this we see that it automatically reloads and I see my first name here, Max. And I can just add my second name, so my last name, um, by doing it the same way, really. And now I got my name here. Now the Angular 2 template syntax offers more than just outputting information uh, in this way. And we will see all of these syntax elements throughout the videos and we'll see quite a lot of them in this video already. Because as I said, I want to be able to click on it and then display more information below this heading here. So let's just add a div to, to hold that. And inside this div, I will have uh, my, let's say, um, let's create a phone number where my phone number will go and then my email where this will go. Okay, so save it, but actually we're not seeing anything as of now. And I only want to display this when we, um, I only want to display this information here when we click on it. So now we need to add some way to add a click event to this title here. And we do this by using a special Angular 2 syntax where we use um, parentheses, click, closing parentheses, equals, and now between the quotation marks, we will define the method which should be, should be executed once we click on this title. So I will name this onSelect and pass no argument. Now this click property here is a default event already recognized by Angular 2. So all the default events um, toggled by user interaction, interaction are already implemented in Angular 2, obviously. Now you might recognize these um, parentheses here. Now Angular 2 has a clear differentiation what considers its flow, uh, the, the, the direction data flows. So as I told you in the architecture video, we generally got this unidirectional data flow. And you can remember the direction by the braces um, or the parentheses you're using um, around your property here. So if you use normal parentheses, um, we're talking about an event and the data will flow from the view to the component. Now, if these were 
uh, squared brackets here. I can type squared brackets. Um, we would have flow the opposite direction and I will show you that to you in just a second. So we got this on select here and we have to obviously specify this method in our component here. So on select with no arguments and on select, what, what should happen when we click this on select? I then went to display this block here. So first of all, let me add that information here. So now you can see, oops, email, that it is visible. And now I, yeah, I only want to show this if some condition is true. So let me first create a Boolean property here, which basically says um, show detail equals false by default. And when we click here, I want to set it, oops, this show detail, I want to set it to true. Now at the moment nothing changes because I got no condition here. This will be the next Angular 2 syntax we're learning today will be star ng if equals. Now, if you see something starting with a star, it will be some structural directive, which means some command, so to say, which will alter the structure of your document. In this case, it is pretty easy to, to recognize because what does this uh, ngif do? Well, we will define something which will then define or determine if this block will be shown or not. And this clearly changes the structure of our element or of our document. So here in between the quotation marks, we will then enter the condition which should be checked. And we want to check if show detail equals true. Only then should this be, sh be shown. So now if we click on this, we see the detail here. Now I want to show you another very important template syntax we got here. And let's say we want this, if we click on it, um, then we want this to, let's say, get red, just to more highlight that we click on it. Now, therefore, I will define uh, just a little class here, which I call clicked, and which basically changes the color to red. And back in my app component here, I will then add squared brackets equals something and between the square brackets I will write class dot clicked. Now this class property here is also a default property which comes with Angular 2 which allows us to easily attach or detach classes, CSS classes, to an HTML element. And we then specify dot clicked to attach the clicked class. Now all we do is we also have to provide a condition here when to attach this class and we will use the same as below show detail equals true. Now if we click on this, nothing happens because actually we're not importing this style as of now. So therefore I will just um, tell this component to load my app.css file here and I will do this by writing style URLs, which is just another configuration here. Then square brackets because it could be multiple files. And then we have a string which will point to our source file here, so our CSS file, app.css. So this should do the trick. And if we now click on it, it gets red. Cool, huh? Angular 1 was really popular due to its two-way data binding.
Now while Angular 2 generally has this unidirectional approach, two-way data binding is still there. And I will show it to you. So until now we saw only one-way data binding from the view to the component and from the component to the view. Squared brackets is from the component to the view and parentheses is from the view to the component. This is a structural directive and now we will implement two-way data binding. We will do this by adding an input field here. Type text, that's fine. Save it so that we can see it here. The rest does still work as you can see. Now, this input type should be tied to our contact here. Now to add two-way data binding here, we will combine the two uh, template syntaxes we learned so far for the, each direction of the data flow. So first we will have the um, squared brackets and then our parentheses inside the squared brackets equals something. And then here we have to write ng model. Now ng model is just a built-in Angular 2 method, so to say, to create two-way data binding. That is all we have to know about it right now. So we then link it to the property which should be bound to this text input here. And let's say we want to be able to edit the first name of our contact here. Then we would just write contact.firstName here, save this. And now we see we got Max here. Now if we edit this to Chris, you see it live updates on each character we change. Change. So I will give that my full name. And now if I click on this, we still got the rest of this working. So now we got really some core concepts of Angular 2. We got different template syntax elements. We got the very important two-way binding. Um, we saw how to create a component. And in the next video, we will actually create several components or two components to start with and have them work together and have data flow from one component to another component to display something there. So I hope you stick with me. Please leave some comments if you liked or disliked this video and I will be happy to see you in the next video. Bye.